When you watch Formula One, it's almost impossible to ignore just how massive the cars have gotten, especially if you've seen how small and nimble they used to be. But as big as the current cars are in Formula One, most people don't even realize just how small the engine that powers them from 0 to 200 miles an hour in 9 seconds really is. When you remove the hybrid components and the airbox, this is what you're left with a tiny 1.6 liter V6 that almost looks comically small when you compare it to the size of the car that you put it in. I first started thinking about this when I made my video a few weeks back talking about the incredible engineering of the V10s that Formula 1 used to run back in the early 2000s. In that video, I made a comment about how a Honda Goldwing has more displacement than every Formula 1 car that's been made in the past 9 years since 2014. I guess it would be 10 years now. 2014 is, of course, when F1 ditched the screaming V8s for the relatively tame sounding V6 sixes that we still use today. Seriously, these engines are tiny, yet they're capable of making over 800 horsepower all on their own, even without taking the hybrid components into consideration, which of course pumps that figure well over a thousand. And what's really crazy is that these engines are actually capable of making much more than this, but due to fuel flow limits and the regulations, among other things, they don't get anywhere near their potential. How is it possible that such a small engine can make so much power? An even better question might be, how can they do it reliably? Because unlike like the V10 days where engines could be swapped out effectively as often as you would like, going into the 2024 Formula 1 season, teams are only going to be allowed to use three engines. Let's focus on that second question first. How is an engine that revs over 12,000 RPM, makes almost 1,000 horsepower, and spends almost its entire operating life at full throttle so reliable? Again, relatively speaking. A lot of it is, like we already said, that these engines are run well below their theoretical limits. In the Formula 1 regulations, it's stated that engines cannot rev past 15,000 RPM, but in reality, none of the engines on the current grid even get close to this, due to limits on how much fuel they're allowed to carry and burn. Most of the engines on the grid today make peak power only around 12,000 RPM. And of course, when the V6s were first introduced, they were anything but reliable. But as manufacturers got to grips with their designs, improvements started to be made in the materials that were used and the layouts of the design. Software got better, machining got better, and an abundance of telemetry data allows engineers to spot and fix issues even during a race before they begin to domino and cause disaster. You know what else can cause disaster? Sharing and accessing personal information on public networks. Thankfully, this is where today's sponsor, Surfshark, comes into play. If you don't know what a VPN is, it keeps your personal and private information safe while you're browsing the web, something that's more important today than ever before. Think of Surfshark as a middleman. When you connect to one of their servers, sensitive information like your IP address, your location, passwords to things like your bank accounts and your emails are all protected. Not to mention the ability to gain access to all sorts of new content that might not be available in your home country. I'm sure you've been at a Starbucks or a hotel or an airport and you've logged onto their public Wi-Fi and did whatever you had to do, but you didn't think anything of it. But in today's day and age where our entire lives are digital, why would you risk it when you don't have to? And thanks to today's deal, you don't have to, because if you go to surfshark.com and use discount code JohnnyF1 at checkout, you can get up to six months of protection completely for free if you sign up by the end of January. Six months, and it's super easy to use. You just download the app, connect to one of their thousands of different servers in over 65 different countries, and you're off to the races. On your way to safe browsing and foreign Netflix, and all you had to do was click one link. What can be better than that? I've had a couple of different companies at this point reach out to try and sponsor a video on the channel, and I've turned them all down because they don't know or trust the service. But Surfshark is something that I personally use and rely on to keep my data safe, and so when they reached out, I was pretty excited about it. I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't believe in what they were doing, so keep your data safe and secure and stop taking risks where you don't need to. Link is in the description. Thanks again Surfshark for supporting this channel. Now let's get back to the video. So we know that the engines are reliable, but how are they so powerful? How does this 1.6 liter V6 make double the power of a 6.2 liter V8 LS3, for example? The biggest reason for how they can squeeze 850 horsepower from a 1.6 liter engine is the high RPM that the engines run at, the fact that they're turbocharged, and maybe most importantly, that they're able to achieve a thermal efficiency higher than pretty much any other internal combustion engine that's ever been made. Higher RPM equals more bangs, and a turbo equals bigger bangs. This gives you more power. If you took that same LS3 V8 that 
that I brought up before that makes 474 pound-feet of torque and ran it at 12,000 RPM, you'd have over a thousand horsepower. Of course this is impossible because those engines would never be able to run that fast in the first place, but it gets the point across of just how important of a role high RPM plays in making power. That LS3 would also drink fuel if it was running at that high of a speed, and this is the real trick of modern Formula 1 engines. Thermal efficiency, when we're talking about internal combustion engines, is how much energy from the fuel is being wasted in the form of heat. In your Honda Accord, a majority of the energy produced by your engine is being completely wasted. In most road legal consumer cars, only 20 to 30 percent of the energy in your fuel is actually being used to turn your wheels. This is great if you're Stan Smith, but not so great if you're trying to make big power with little to work with in terms of displacement or fuel. And in modern Formula One, whether you like it or not, efficiency is the name of the game. Because when you can only burn so much fuel, which according to the rules is 110 kilograms or about 125 liters per race, you need to get as much as you can out of what little you have to work with. In 2017, Mercedes ran their engine on the dyno and measured over 50% thermal efficiency, making it at the time the most thermal efficient internal combustion engine ever developed. That means that over half of the energy in the fuel in that Mercedes engine was actually going to making meaningful power instead of being wasted in the form of heat. This incredible efficiency is a big part of why modern Formula 1 engines are so powerful, but just how are they able to be so efficient in the first place? Well, there's a few key factors to consider here, the first being the incredible compression ratio that the V6s run with. According to the regulations, the engine stroke, meaning that the distance that the piston can travel up and down cannot be more than 53 millimeters, which means that the piston only has a little over two inches of space to travel inside of the cylinder. Where most vehicles have a compression ratio somewhere between 8 to 1 and 12 to 1, these tiny Formula 1 engines have a compression ratio of up to 18 to 1. This allows the piston to travel just a tiny bit further distance in order to achieve a little bit more power with each combustion sequence. Another factor that allows such high thermal efficiency would be the air to fuel ratio. A normal road car engine requires a richer mixture of fuel and air to run, especially when you first start up your engine in the morning. This is why you'll notice your car revving a little high after you first start it, but it'll slowly go back down as the engine begins to warm up. A regular road car engine will have an air to fuel ratio generally of around 14 to 1. So for every 1 gram of fuel, your engine is breathing in over 14 grams of air. But Formula 1 engines run off of a ratio of 30 to 1, which means 30 grams of air to 1 gram of fuel. This is a very lean mixture. The efficiency of such a lean mixture is only possible because of something called pre-chamber ignition, but that's beyond the scope of this video and may warrant a video all on its own. This incredible compression and very lean air to fuel mixture is even more impressive because these engines are of course turboed. And turbos hate high compression and lean mixtures. In most circumstances, this would lead to severe knocking, which is bad news for engines. This means that the fuel isn't igniting evenly or when it's supposed to. This means that the engineers have to do a lot of clever things with injection and injection timing, pre-chamber ignition, and as much knock resistance in the fuel as are allowed by the rules. And I mentioned the turbo, which is something that we should talk more about, because obviously these engines are boosted. And something that boost does is it effectively increases displacement without actually increasing displacement. I had a hard time finding an exact figure for how much boost Formula 1 cars run, meaning how much more air they're able to suck in because of the turbos, but it seems to be somewhere around 3.7 bar, which is around 55 psi. And that's a lot of boost. So these turbo 1.6 liter engines making 55 pounds of boost could be comparable to a naturally aspirated engine that's much bigger. So if a normal internal combustion engine follows the suck, squeeze, bang, blow sequence, which of course it does, then a Formula 1 engine does the same thing, but with a lot more suck due to the turbo, a lot more squeeze due to the compression, a lot more bang due to pre-ignition and special fuels, and then the exhaust from the blow is then used to help spool the turbo where the cycle repeats. But of course, as incredible and powerful as these tiny V6 turbos are, there's an entire hybrid assembly that we haven't even touched on in this video that bumps that performance from 800 to well over 1000. There's also an electric motor attached to the turbo to help it keep rotating and making boost even when engine revs are low, eliminating turbo spool entirely. The V6s are able to produce so much power because they're the most efficient engines ever made. They're incredibly sophisticated and are constantly being monitored to make sure that they operate in a very small window of optimum performance. They're made out of the best materials that we have available to incredible tolerances 
and are heavily boosted. Modern day Formula One is a brilliant example of how limitations can breed creative engineering. Despite all of the rules, all the regulations, the cars keep getting faster, keep getting more powerful, and keep getting more efficient. The fact that you can make this much power out of such a small and lightweight package with severe limitations on fuel flow and design is an engineering marvel. I said in my video about the V10s that I thought the V6s were actually, technically speaking, much more impressive than the V10s. And I meant it. And also, I think they sound pretty cool.